Bro, this sourdough and butter is hitting right now. Got an avocado right here. Yeah, yup. Go to ground beef, sweet potato, and some rice. And some onion and garlic, and that's it. And some onion and garlic. You're... I said you usually don't eat when you run, do your runs? Like the day of? Like the morning you wake up? Yeah, I just usually go. You're going to take a quarter stop when you come back? Yeah, on my head, like, uh, once I hit the half part, mm -hmm. turn on my head. It. Boom. You know how many cordies? Mm-hmm. Sun's shining bright, but 9.30, let's get this run. Porter Ranch, Los Angeles, California. Yeah. First mile done. 14 minutes, 21 seconds. Third mile done. 11 minutes, 38 seconds. Taking a little pee break again. Yeah. Six mile done, 12 minutes, 11 seconds. Got my first snack of the run, Honey Stinger. Life Pack Organics gave me this to try out. It's a five hour energy, cordyceps drink. Cheers, baby. Going up these hills, bro, is a freaking mess. Jesus, help me, please. 13th mile done, 10 minutes, 45 seconds. Honey Stinger. Nut and seed bar, 16th mile done, 12 minutes, 54 seconds. Bro, I'm in so much pain right now. 26 mile, 1244, the practice marathon. We took a shower and we about to eat some gin ramen, you feel me? A little spicy. This is what it be, what it do, yeah, yup. All right, so where we at? Oh shit. We're at LGBTQ plus. No, we're at Korean barbecue. I don't know if y'all can see that. We're out of here, it's 45 anyway. Oh, my bad bro, see ya. Wouldn't wanna be ya. Ugh. I'm in so much pain, yo. Made it to Igogi, Korean barbecue, and pinball. Ace. Oh, it's Ace? Yeah. Oh, Ace. Hey, what's up, Matthew? Hey, what's up, Matthew? What's up? Nice Rick and Morty pinball, sick ass, bro. Don't go right through the middle, you see that? <laughs> there you go. Right? Bro, that is the dumbest. That's the worst, right? When it goes through the middle? You already know. There's nothing you can do. No way! Sick. Bro, At least he, did, he didn't beat me, though. Two times in a row? Literally the same again? Oh, you got one more. They, they felt sorry for you. <laughs> they felt sorry. Yeah, yeah, you got an extra one. Bro, why did they do it down the same side? Right? That's when that got me the first time. That shit was fast as hell. Wow. That was you, that was you. Slow slow reaction. Oh, right up there. Oh. Good job, dude. Let's go. I give you more chance for high scores once you keep hitting that shit. Uh, we love to see those. We love to see those. Oh. Four? Four? Bro! Oh my god! Oh, 
my gosh, bro. Bro, what? Tripping. Damn. All right, you back to two? Yeah. Oh, back to what? <laughs> Fuck out. Zone in, zone in. Let's go. Go. It's better to hit early than not. Always be ready. Yes, sir. Oh, oh, oh. Uh huh? No. Uh huh. Oh, there we go. There we go. Extra ball or what? I don't know. Start with multiple ball. What? Bro, what? There's another one. There has to be another one in there. That's it. No, it's right here. Okay. I think that one's just waiting. You're gonna hit. Oh, that's dirty through the backside. That's the worst. Oh, another? Yeah. Oh, back again. Run it back. <laughs> Third time's a charm. Bro. That's dirty. That is Straight through the back bro. every time. Yeah, we well, hit one goal though. There has oh, to be. another one? Let's go. All right. Oh, he got kept alive. Oh my God. He said, believe. Right? I'm not done till I say I. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this right here is fire, and this right here is fire. Can you try the potato dip? That is on fire. I'm putting my hand over it and shit. You're just missing my kimchi. You're just missing Viagra. The homegirl Viagra? Yeah. Oh, 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 Bro, I'm about to munch the fuck out. Noodles. What is this one? Worms? Yeah. More rice? Jerry rice? Okay, dude, what the fuck's up with these noodles? Sponsored. Oh, shit. Here. This is what the plate looking like. Here. More stressed out right now than I am running. <laughs> See, bro, I couldn't, I couldn't even eat five times a day if I tried, bro. That's just hard. That's so much. Hey, what is this, like vanilla ice cream? It's not vanilla ice cream? No, bro. We'll see it. We'll see it. It's yogurt. It's yogurt. It'll help digest everything. Probiotics. Just like green yogurt. But non fat or the soft serves. If you ever had, like, stacks of uh, green yogurt and shit like that? That's all for your gut. I'm not really like a dairy person. Ready? Do you want another one? Another one? Yeah. This one, this one. This one? You can, get, you can make it. <laughs> <laughs> She's getting freaked. <laughs> <laughs>
Carl Malone, Post Malone, <laughs> Carl Malone, Henry Battle, Hakeem Olajuwon. Damn, these are some classic players. All right, yo, so we've been fasting all day. How many hours? Uh, 20... 29? 28? 27. 27 hours of fasting with the unk. And um, this is what we're starting the fast, or starting to break the fast with. Yeah, we started with some fruits and healthy fats with the avocado. Now we're just carving up with some butter. Yep, and some, some bread, bread, some peanuts, some dried peas. You know what I'm saying? The ding dong. Filipino shit. Yeah, yup. Oh my god. What is that, like six cheese? Three cheese, I think. Some shit like that. God bless America. That shit goes stupid. Unc got the soup right here. Yeah, yup. Fire. Van Damme. It's cold as hell outside, so. <laughs> Thank God we got this. Steamer. This is, this is a steam room. The homie Rick Rubin. Rick Rubin. The creative act, the way of being. Speak to me. I don't know this word. How would you pronounce that? Apocryphy. Apocrypha. Biblical or related writings not forming a part of the accepted canon of scripture. Writings or reports not considered genuine. Biblical or related writings. Okay, here we go. Every artist has heroes, creators whose work we connect with, whose methods we aspire to, whose words we cherish. These exceptional talents can seem beyond human, like a mytholog mythological figure. From a distance, what can we know to be true? Without witnessing a beloved work's uh, actual creation, it's impossible to know what truly happened. And if we did observe the process with our own eyes, our account would be an outside interpretation at best. The stories about how works get made and the rituals of the artists who make them are generally exaggerated and often pure fiction. A work of art happens naturally, of its own accord. We may wonder where the underlying idea came from and how each individual element was put together to produce such a masterwork but nobody knows how or why these things happen, often not even the maker. In cases when the artist thinks they know, their interpretation may not be accurate or the whole story. We live in a mysterious world full of uncertainties, and we regularly make assumptions to explain them. Coming to terms with the complexity of our human experience allows us to exit our natural state of confusion, to survive. Generally, our explanations are guesses. These are vague hypotheticals become fixed in our mind as facts. We are interpretation machines, and this process of labeling and detaching is efficient but not accurate. We are unreliable narrators of our own experience. So when an artist creates a work that comes together by an unseen hand and the process is later analyzed, what we get is more storytelling. This is art history. Art reality is forever unknown. These stories may be interesting and fun to think about, but to believe a specific method is responsible for the qualifying of a work is misleading, especially if it causes you to repeat that process in hopes of achieving a similar result. Legendary figures in art and history are sometimes held up as deities. It is counterproductive to measure ourselves against them because they never existed as such. They are, with, they are beings with typical human vulnerabilities and flaws just like us. Each artist works with their own balance of strengths and weaknesses, and there is no rule that more, praise, that more praiseworthy strengths or romanticized self-destruction equals better art. Expressing yourself is all that matters. All art is a form, form of, po of poetry. It's always changing, never fixed. We may think we know what a piece uh, we make means, yet over time, that interpretation may change. The creator stops being the creator once they finish the work. They then become the viewer. And the viewer can bring as much of their own meaning to a piece as a creator. That's true. Like a lot of the times when you see art, it's like, what resonates yeah. with me? Like they made it for something else, but what we see and what speaks to us is our interpretation of it. We will never know a work's true meaning. It's helpful to remember that there are forces 
at work beyond our comprehension. Let's make art and let others make the stories. That's true too when it says like, we will never know a work's true meaning. It's like sometimes when I see a movie and like the ending or like, you know how when you finish a movie, it's like, damn, what did they mean? Like, why did they end this? Why did they end it like that? Why did they do this, do that? And it's like, you try to figure it out, but it's- uh, That's when we start creating it ourselves. A lot of the time, the director, the writer, the author leaves it on a cliffhanger like that for us to get our brains working, yeah. We are dealing in a magic realm. Nobody knows why or how it works. Tuning out, undermining voices. We may take years, even decades, to create our first project. It typically develops in a vacuum in an ordinary way, in a conversation mostly with ourselves. After we share it, outside influences can emerge. An audience appears, whether it consists of friends or large groups of strangers. Individuals and companies with business interests can sign on. And as we begin to work on our next project, loud outer voices may speak at us from the sidelines, influencing us in a different creative direction demanding the work now without concern for quality. As these voices enter an artist's head, concern for deadlines, deals, sales, media attention, public image, staff, overhead, growing the audience, keeping the existing fan base, they can undermine our focus. Damn, that's true. Just like everything like I'm thinking with business, like, hey, I gotta build a team for this, gotta think of this and this and this and that. But then like the art of like why you're creating it and your maybe your reason and your mission of why you're doing it gets kind of clouded with how am I going to deliver it? How are people going to accept it? How are, like, you know, you got to focus on the, you got to focus on like the main thing. And I think everything stems out of that. The intentions of our art can shift from self-expression to self, uh, self-sustainment from creative choices to business decisions. See, exactly. Like when we're creating things like for example like me with just businesses like it's a creative way like when i talk to people like it's my art like when i create something and just like interpreting something and having my heart and stuff going into a business and seeing it come to fulfillment those are creative choices then it turns to business decisions the intentions of our art can shift from self-expression how we create a business how we create our channel how we create our things to self-sustainment then when self-sustainment is i believe like when you create the idea now it's just how do you keep it alive? Like not just being it and doing it, but then all the things of, okay, post it here, do this, mm-hmm. do that to self-sustain it and keep it up, you know? But then all the, the more you, the more you put that energy onto the things that you think are going to sustain it, this thing is dropping it. So you have to put more here just to keep that up. But when you're doing this and you're just elevating it from being and from that art area, then everything else should come into play. The key to navigating this phase of an artistic journey is learning to tune out to prevent external pressures from entering our inner process and interfering with the pure creative state. Let me read that one more time. The key to navigating this phase of an artistic journey is learning to tune out, to prevent external pressure from entering our inner process and interfering with our pure creative state. It helps to recall the clear mindset that produced the first work and allowed success to happen originally. Set aside not just business concerns, but the needs and thoughts of these outside voices. Keep them out of your consciousness while in pursuit of your best work. Set aside not just business concerns, but the needs and thoughts of these outside voices. And just focus on your mission, you, you, you. Keep them out of your consciousness while in pursuit of your best work. When you're able to focus purely on creativity and work in a sacred space, everyone benefits and all other priorities are served. Exactly. Mm. So when you're able to focus purely on creativity and work in a sacred space, everyone benefits and all other priorities are served. At any stage in a career, the critic in your head may make its voice heard, repeating that you're not talented enough. Your idea isn't good enough. Art isn't a worthwhile investment of your time. The results won't be well received. You're a failure. Or there may be contrary voices that tells, that tells you that everything you do is perfect and you will be the greatest phenomenon the world has ever seen. More often than not, 
These are outer voices that were abs absorbed early in life. Perhaps a critical or a doting or a dotting parent, teacher, or mentor. These voices are not our own. We have internalized someone else's judgment. So it can be met with the same indifference as the other random chatter. Any pressure you feel around the work from the inside or outside is a signal for self-examination. The artist's goal is to keep themselves pure and unattached. The artist's goal is to keep themselves pure and unattached. Okay? To avoid letting stress, responsibility, fear, and dependence on a particular outcome distract. And if it does, it is never too late to reset. The first step of clearing is acknowledgement. Notice yourself feeling the weight of self-criticism or the pressure to live up to expectations. And remember that commercial success is completely out of your control. All that matters is that you are making something you love to the best of your ability here and now. Working to free yourself from inner voices is a kind of meditation. It's facts. Working mm -hmm. to free yourself from inner voices is a kind of meditation. Be present. Not even A lot of the times the inner voices are more just like questioning your why, why am I doing this? Is this really, you know? Yeah. So when you are able to tune those out, even your inner voices, that's how you just stay present in the moment and it's so kind of like meditation. Set aside all concerns for a stretch of time and say, I'm only going to focus on this one practice, making great work. If any distractions come along during that period, don't ignore them or focus on them. Don't give them any energy at all. Let them pass like clouds uh, parting around a mountain. Because if you ignore them, ignoring does take conscious effort. Yeah. Like if you're going to ignore something, you, you're you doing it. But it's still yeah, yeah. You're, you're making it a task. Yeah, you're, you're exactly, yeah. exactly. You're consciously putting it to your mind to ignore it. But the fact that you're trying to ignore it, you're thinking about it. Regularly engaging in this practice builds the muscle of focused intention, which you can use in everything you do. Eventually, tuning out the undermining voices and losing yourself in the work will not be an effort of will, but an earned ability. That's, that's key right there. Like, tuning out and the undermining voices, but also losing yourself in the work mm -hmm. will not be an effort of will, but an earned ability. Because, yeah, that takes, like, to lose yourself in it doesn't mean you lose yourself. But it kind of just meshes. Like yeah. when you're creating that thing that is outside of you and you lose yourself to it, it's actually creating from like inside out within that piece of art that you're making. So losing yourself in there is the best way for it to truly express what you're feeling. Yeah. Uh, I think Conor McGregor said something similar to that where he said, uh, I kind of lost myself while working on his craft, but that's what allowed him to be who he was. Yeah, yeah. Again... Losing yourself, like self is just ego. Mm -hmm. So when you focus on like your craft, you find yourself from that, like us as humans, and we're, we're able to just like adapt and almost be anything that we want ourselves to be or allow ourselves to be. So when you like lose yourself in it, then you discover things of you that you didn't know. You mm -hmm. go into the unknown and shit. That shit's key. It's crazy, like literally what they say about this book, like what we're doing is just like, it brings you into a meditative state. Like the way he wrote it, it's just like a lot of internalizing and thinking.